As it will. <laughs> Highland, then we have to continue. Good right. afternoon. Yeah. The yeah. Design Review Board one meet public meeting of October 30th of 2008 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves during the meeting and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker's cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You'll be called to present a case or speak on a specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current DRB agendas are available by calling our DRB hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and DRB reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that the case planner will um, uh, announce at the end of the case uh, whether or what the appeal period will be on that particular item. Uh, the chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. This will be a roll call. Mr. Aliano? Here. Mr. Ins Ellis? Present. Mr. Insua? Mr. Simonian? Present. Mr. Yu. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at our 4 5 p.m. on October 23, 2008. Oral communications. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on an item that's not a part of this agenda? None. Any cards by any chance? I don't believe okay. so. Okay. Seeing none, uh, we will move to the review calendar. Uh, at this point, we do not have any staff announcements. There's nothing on the consent calendar, and you're down to the um, the cases for today. Thank you very much. Welcome to Design Review Board 1. Uh, our first case this evening is 1-PDR-2007-059-B, which is 1343 Highland Avenue. The applicant, as I understand it, has asked for a continuation. Uh, we've uh, uh, discussed the matter with staff, and it seems as though we could continue it for a date certain two weeks from today. However, staff wants to reiterate that based on some of the previous continuations, uh, that this would be the final continuation. And from what we understand, uh, the applicant had some problems, you know, coming here today. And so um, then that would be uh, what date uh, should we make it for? November 13. Yeah. Thank November, you. 13. <laughs> November 13 it is, so it will be a date certain and uh, for do November 13. Thank you. Our next case case is 1-PDR-2008-059-A, 1154 Avon Oak Terrace. And I believe staff has a presentation for us. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The next project before you will be case number 1PDR-2008-059, located at 1154 Avon Oak Terrace. The project consists of uh, addition of 2,008 square foot to the existing um, second story of the existing single-family residence and uh, covered patio to both first and the second floor. The building was constructed in 1963 and according to our historic preservation planner is not a uh, considered historic resource under CEQA. Although the site is a, uh, located on a hillside, but uh, the addition as well as the existing house are located on the flat pad portion of the lot. The location of existing garage which is facing the street and the street front setback remains unchanged. The site plan continues to fit well within the context of neighborhood, majority of which are two-story buildings with garage uh, facing the street. Although the proposal increases the footprint of the building and pushes out the envelope of the house, 
due to the open nature of the uh, patios, the appearance of the mass is minimized. The proposed patios alters all uh, building elevations, appear as uh, integral part of the building, and create more consistent elevation on all sides. The house is currently 27 feet high, and there is no, no increase to the height is proposed. The existing windows will be uh, changed to or replaced with white aluminum to match the proposed windows. New retaining walls and uh, boundary walls are proposed. The existing concrete walkways and driveways will be replaced with uh, decorative concrete blocks. Staff uh, recommends the approval of the project, and should the board um, consider, uh, should the board approve the project, I will, the um, draft record of the decision is attached. And if we, you would like, I can at the end of the meeting go over it. And um, I am here for any question. It's 208 square foot addition. Is that correct? All right. Okay. I And if you would, one more time, uh, point out the exact locations that the addition is occurring at. The addition is the rear back. Here. Okay. The, I, I know it's a little bit difficult to see from distance, but this is where the point is. Mm -hmm. That's where it's shaded. Is. That's it. Okay. Exactly. And also these patios um, are the new one. On the first floor is just to the back and on the north side, if you like. And on the second story, it will be for corner of the although one of them would be remodeling of the existing. Do we have uh, any questions for staff? I don't. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to see the picture when you have The first speaker is Edward Hagopian, the architect. Good evening, Mr. Chair and board members. My name is Edward Hagobian. I am the architect of this project, addition to this house. My address is 220 South Kenwood Street, Suite 210 Glendale 91205. I think Jale has covered most of the issues involved with this addition. Of course, in the beginning, she says 2,000 square foot addition, and my heart felt down that <laughs> only 200 square foot addition. <laughs> Well, but, oh, did I say 2,000? Yes. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I I'm sorry. You, so. <laughs> you did a good job hiding that extra 1,800 square feet, Mr. Adobe. <laughs> uh, simply, we are adding like about three to four square foot to the first floor. The rest is the addition is on the second floor, which uh, we are only extending the footprint of the house for the room that we are adding on top. And uh, uh, we are going to ch change the roof material. Uh, <laughs> The existing uh, roof of that balcony facing the street is very low and uh, constructed with a lot of roots going left and right and up and down, and we are simplifying that, cleaning that, and making a little bit higher so that uh, the window in the balcony can have uh, a better view and uh, it's more uh, functional and usable. Other than that, we are uh, keeping the style of the house the way it is. Um, the whole idea of adding this uh, to patios is that the house is east-west oriented, and the sun in the morning and afternoon is hitting these two rooms and bothering them. Original design had that balcony on the street side, which was preventing the sun, but didn't have any other balconies for other rooms. That's what we are doing with the balconies. That's the reason for that. Uh, other than that, there's not much to say. If you have any questions, a simple, small addition. You're basically adding these balconies back here, right? May I come close to show? Sure. Yes, please. Sure. The pointers over on the side there. Mm -hmm. The room addition is, uh, is, is here. This is what we are adding. We are, of course, doing some interior remodelings that have, has nothing to do with the exterior appearance of the house, but 
basically this is what we are adding this is already a roof of the lower level room so we are converting that to uh, a balcony to prevent the sun in the morning and the same thing we are doing here and here uh, that's it so really the only the mass that you're adding is um, back here yes in this piece yes and this well, it's very behind the front. Right, right now there's a roof here, right? We mm -hmm. have a roof here, yes. We have the existing mm -hmm. plans for... Oh, sorry, yeah, I saw them already, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. be, I'm sorry, this is existing? This that is, is existing, yes. Uh, uh, let me explain what we are doing with this. Uh, it's interior thing that uh, there is a patio here. First floor plan. This is the patio now. But then we arrange these rooms because this is a very small. Uh, let's see if I can see this. No, this is the after remodeling. I you don't have the existing plans here. We have to. Anyway. There was no room to see, but I have them here. Um. Anyway, uh, there is a very small bedroom here that we are uh, we arranging this in a way that will become a usable bedroom. And that separates this balcony from the rest of the house. Besides, if they need something after sitting, eating area, which will be close to the kitchen, this is a better location for that. We have a bedroom here that, uh, let's see, yeah, it's not a master bedroom, it's a bedroom like 8 by 10 or 11, it's very small. We are orienting it in this direction, so we can separate this patio from the, this house, that's why we are creating this sitting area. Okay. Thank you. So it's orienting basically all that. I have a question for you, sir. Yes. On the existing house, uh, the, the rafter tails and the eave pieces, I noticed that there's some architectural little hangs out on the ends. Now, I don't notice that. Actually, I don't see it. You know, the ends here, there's a, you see it, it sticks out a little bit on each side. Is that being changed? No, we'll keep the same. Is it, you, know, you know, it's like a little bit sticks out on, on each of the ends. There's a, see a piece sticking out there, there's a piece well, here. Well, for the fire department purpose, we have to close underneath well, the piece like that. You need to speak into yeah, the microphone so we could get it on record. Uh, yeah, you know, here's another one too, but yeah, that was a question. So you need to, I'm sorry, continue. We have to, we have to wrap it with uh, stucco so that the fire department will approve the plans. It's it's a uh, fire zone four. Uh, we have to prevent, pr protect the eaves. Gotcha. Great. Do we have any more questions? I don't, thank you. For the architect? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is George Seeley. Good evening, everyone. My name is George Seeley. I live on a house to the left of this project, um, 1160 Even Oak Terrace. Um, I think it's been our family house since it was new and built there. Um, I kind of speak in a little bit opposition to the project on just a few points. Um, it, um, this, that's how I can go with my notes. Uh, we're in opposition to the project for the following reasons. We feel the review letter sent to everybody at 208 square foot addition, but kind of small. It, it seemed, seemed to be backpedaling as patios, adding square foot, but not um, being called square foot to the building. So I think it makes the um, addition actually larger than. Um, it is in relation to the um, maybe a square footage of the lot. Secondly, as I we notice with this house, it, um, it has um, a lot of people there. It's just uh, family, but you know there's a lot of cars. It's kind of noisy. Our house is situated as such where our bedroom is in the what would you say the front right corner directly next to this house, so it's to the street. So um, 
that's kind of noisy. Um, the, a lot of cars going in and out at night, and probably not the place to bring this kind of a complaint or a message. But with the addition of this house, I think it creates more of the same. Mr. Seeley, when, when um, sorry to interrupt, but when oh. we're standing at the street looking at the proposed home, okay, do you live on the left or right side of it or across the street? The left, sir. The left, sir. So you're at the corner. I'll give you one picture. If you would. Aerial picture. I'm sorry, I didn't make enough copies for everybody. I should know by now. Thank but you. as expected. Uh, so yours is the corner house. Correct, the corner house. Okay. Uh, and so that's the, that's like an aerial view and. Um, the bedroom would be the front corner right next to the um, said project. Okay, uh, proceed. And um, and also, I guess I guess increases the traffic at, at that neighborhood and at the intersection of Swarthmore and Avon. It tends to be more and more crowded with more people living up there now. And what that corner is, it's a unregulated corner, meaning there's no sign there. But we got a double yellow, so you can't turn left down the hill and cut that off. But when you come up that street, it makes it um, kind of iffy all the time. I'm um, also with the project. There's um, like balconies are for may maybe smoking or such. So um, from the house, you get a lot of smoking um, smells that come that lofts over to other people's houses as things go on. And um, one important thing I want us reading through there is that we have um, the houses kind of have a I don't know if you want to call it a setback or that house is in the line as in a little bit on the aerial photograph there and when I have to kind of create open spaces and in addition is for, we're forced to look up at like a hotel house looking structure with balconies looking down in our backyard taking away the privacy spoiling open spaces the original you know builders intended and the air view, aerial view looks, um, shows that and um, here's another picture I've got enough of these ones. This will be my view of oh, talking to the microphone. Thank you. And I guess um you have color pictures and they're nice enough that we they built some structure to the project so you can see ahead of time. So I'm just took the pictures and um, used their wood to show how it's gonna expand. So and then I was just gonna say um we had twins born in August, so a project next door is going to be um, need to be kind of carefully watched over. I don't know how you take off the roof with all. I've been in our roof; it's got a lot of stuff inside there for um, insulation. So when you take off the roof, there's going to be a lot of dust and noise. Of course, any project has that. And what I was kind of concerned with also is they had a thing about building a fence to the top of the gutter that would be kind of unsightly and take away the beauty of the hills and the property line angle of our house to theirs goes up the back hill and would give the illusion of the fence coming over to our side. So there's just some um, views I had on how this addition kind of affects us. I, I'm sorry, can I ask you just your last comment about the wall? What? Um, it says, I don't know if it shows it on the plans, it says it in the, uh, the plans I got when I went down to the city, about, um, let's see, a, two, a, a foot tall concrete wall that would, and it has a metal fence above it that go, would go up the hill, you can see it on my aerial photograph, up to the cement gutter. Um, so that's kind of a thing you would have to look at all the time. And we call, could ask you're calling this the cement gutter here? Correct, sir. So the wall is going to go all the way up to there? I That's I can look and imagine. I don't I didn't even see the plan, I just read it. And we could ask the architect for some clarification about that fence. Right. There's currently a five foot wall between your property and, and the existing That's right. Right, okay. I think that wall needs some some repair and I'll um you respect everybody. Well, then we all have the same picture. We all have the yeah. same one. Are you the aerial? You're there are only two of those aerials. Yes, sir. To the aerial? Uh, well, everybody has an aerial. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. That's where the wall ends at the, at the foot of the slope. Okay. Uh, the third house over, I don't know if it shows it has like a, a mid wall, but it's been 
grown for so long you really can't see the fence. It's got a lot of um, trees right along your little fence. Do we have any more questions for Mr. Seeley? I'm good, thank you. Okay, I brought extras of those. I don't know if that supplements your um, vision of this project, if you'd like to. The extra pictures of the story poles? Yeah, those are for yourselves. Um, if that works if, for you If guys. you would like, uh, you could give one to staff as well, for the record. But uh, I think if they're all the same picture, we've seen enough. We, we understand what you're saying. Oh, of, co of course. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Seeley. You. Thank you. I have no other uh, uh, speaker cards for this item. Is anybody in the audience would like to uh, speak on this project? If you would, you could uh, approach the podium, and then afterwards you could fill out one of the cards and hand it to staff. I just have a question relative to the if design. You would, uh, of, state of the your fence. name for the record. Yeah, please. Bill Blocko, and I'm the neighbor on the right side. I see. Of, okay. of the property, and this is the first time I've really seen the sketch. I guess my concern is that they're proposing, a, a, I think, a six-foot wall that would separate our property and their property at the top of the bank. Is this probably the same? No, on the other side. Is this the same fence that Mr. No. Seeley was referring to? There, but there are two two fences, as I, as I see the drawing. Uh, the one that he's outlining there is a metal fence that goes up the back of their property up to the, uh, uh, to the drainage line. So you're talking about this, right? right. And what I'm asking on is on the lower side, the lowest part of the lot, which would be the, uh, I guess, the southern portion. If I read the uh, directions right, all along that southern lot line is going to be a six-foot block wall. Is that accurate? Um, there's a stone wall. Running from the street all the way to the back of the property. Right. There's a wall that's doing this. <clears throat> right. Well, there's even one further down that would appear at the top if this I'm... right here. Uh, new six-foot high decorative. Isn't that... Is that an outline of a six-foot block wall that would right. go right. along the, the top, top of that bank? Uh, well, look at, this looks like a retaining condition here. Because it's going downhill. Because it's going one. this yeah, way, right. right. And we could ask the architect to perhaps come up and shed some light on that matter. So this wall is the one that you're inquiring about? Correct. Okay. Right. Do you prefer to have a wall there or no wall? Well, I, I, a six-foot wall seems excessive for that particular location. I'm not sure why it has to be that tall. Uh, and it's, that's going to be at the top. That will be at the top of the bank, and then we'd have a very narrow strip running from our property to that block wall. So that wall will be right here. Yeah, yeah, right. It's on this drawing here. And that's right at the uh, the northern boundary to our lot line. <laughs> Is your objection on the front setback portion, or is it along the entire property? Just along the along the property. It could start, say, some at some dimension away from the street. That wouldn't be objectionable. But when it comes to, uh, say, our our house, it's going to be a very narrow strip that's going to be between our home and where this proposed uh, so the objection wall is, really is going the wall to be coming all the way to the sidewalk, quote unquote is not your preference. You'd ra rather see it set back, in which case you... It's well, that would be one feature, but the main feature would be a six-foot wall, which is a pretty tall wall, um, enclosing, you know, that portion of the of the lot. Well, what we'll do is um, address these questions with the architect, and I'm sure uh, we could uh, get a lot more details as to the uh, mentality behind okay. them. Okay, and then the other question I have, there's a drainage sump uh, right in the uh, back portion which I don't see outlined there. And I'm wondering how this fencing is going to uh, relate to that drainage uh, section. Mr. Blacko, please uh, come up yeah. point, uh, to yeah, the general direction or location of this pump. Right back here. Right. Is that the drain that comes out at the street? Oh, I do see it now. It's right here. So that's where the water is coming in and then goes underground. Is that what happens there? Yes, correct. All right, I see this here. Then. There's a drain right about here. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. No. I was I I was depicting this going somewhere around here, but I see it now. It's going back on their property. Well, this this kind of sets between ours right in here.
and I'm not sure what, what that particular line represents. Is that to indicate the boundary like of... a fence. I think that's your... Do you have a fence? Yeah, that but, looks it, like a but fence it doesn't... Symbol. There's no jog in here like that. It's a straight line. Hmm. It goes back there. Well, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to... We'll anyway, my main concern is the height of this wall, which I had no idea they were going to put that in there. Right now, there is no wall there. Um, and it just seems like six foot would be an excessive height to run along that wall. And I'm not sure, is that just to have privacy to the residents or, or why it has to be that tall? Is there problems with animals coming from the hills? Is that why you have to have protection? Are there well, it, we do have animals coming down from the hill, but uh, no, I don't. I don't know that the wall along here, uh, you know, does a lot to prevent that. Anyway, that's that's my concern. In the in the brick wall, um, I guess that's what it indicates, right? A block block wall. Well, what I suggest is uh, anything with the wall. Let's get the architect up here. Yeah, and I mean there are a number of varieties of wall, and uh, if we're going to be looking at six feet of it, then. I kind of like to have some idea of what that's going to look sure. like. Sure, and, and those are the kind of details where I think it's best. We get the architect up here and then he'll discuss it. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for Mr. Beckham? Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, is there any other speakers in the crowd um, that would like to speak on this item? No? Uh, then, uh, Mr. Hagropian, uh, uh, you have a, a few minutes. If you would please address. Uh, some of the issues that were brought up by both neighbors to the left and right. Yes, uh, the neighbor on the left side, which is Mr. Sealy, I had the opportunity to see him and I talked to him because they have uh, trees that they have grown and they have pushed this uh, the wall between these two houses. You can see in this picture how that wall is warped and this dangerous situation there. And the owner of this house is willing to spend his money to demolish that and to build it again so it will be safe. We haven't heard from them yet. I personally talked to him and I'm still waiting to see if they will agree with that, that owner to spend money and, and repair that because maybe they have built something illegal at the property line, which you can see the picture here, mm -hmm. that the roof is encroaching from that wall into this property. Could we uh, take a look at this picture? Okay. I see, so this depicts some shed. And it the depicts pool heater, it looks like. It's, if you, there it is in that view. And I there is a kind of uh, exhaust pipe. Pool heater, it looks off. like. Yeah. Okay. Or pool yeah. Something yeah. equipment. I hope uh, eventually we'll hear from uh, Mr. Silly to agree that we spend money to demolish that portion of the wall, which is uh, dangerous, and build it again. Uh, on the other side... Um, is, is the wall on the subject property or is it on the property line? Do you know? Based on the survey? Based on the survey that that wall is inside our property, the way that the survey shows. Yeah. Maybe a larger scale plan will show better there. If you would uh, come up and this yes. way we could address all the questions that relate to the wall yes. in more detail. Yeah, so here's the property. No, no we're talking wall, about no. this one. Yeah. You see this this line, this is the property line, and the wall is inside our property. Right. Yes, sorry. This is the property line, and the wall is inside our property, except that kind of crook now, and uh, it's dangerous. And the earthquake will up and down. But uh, on this side, on the front 15 feet of the setback, we cannot have higher than 18 inches wall. That is the code. Unless if it's a retaining wall, which in this case we don't have that, that situation. We are, now there is no wall here and uh, the owner was complaining that all the time these debris are coming down and making this driveway always messy. So by putting this about between one to one and a half feet high retaining wall here, we'll control this dirt, but then they want to, as you said, they want to prevent animals coming from down this up, from the hill down to this house, which they want to secure around this house. This will be a fence. This is not a wall. Just one foot of. Uh, but, but you are proposing a six-foot yes, wall here. Yes. Yeah, on this side, yes. 
This is uh, which will be here. Yes. So you're going to have a big wall right there. Yes. Going up the hill, on top of the hill. On top of the hill. Yeah. Uh, it's not on top of the hill because, as you can see, the contours go higher and higher beyond our property line. Somewhere in the pro I mean in the property line, the owner is that's his his her uh, desire to have uh, a, a wall here, but the rest here. All this will be just a foot high concrete wall to support the fence. This portion over here would be the one foot high concrete yes. wall with a fence above From it? From here all the way to here. And, and this is going to be a wood fence or a chain no, link fence? No, no, uh, this will be a metal rod iron fence. Rod iron fence, okay. Um, I was, when I went out to the site, there's a small retaining wall along the front here. Are you? Yeah, yeah it looks like it's taken a, a dive off the hill, also, kind of like. Uh, well, yeah. I, I didn't. I'm uh, if that's I didn't recognize. If that's the case, we'll repair that also. Down at the one corner by uh, Mr. Seavage's property, yeah, you can see where the hill slipped down around it, and the edge of the wall was tipping over. So it's, it's only about you know, about 18 inches. Off. Take care of it. Would Would the applicant consider doing the same uh, a, a fence as opposed to a block wall on that? I don't know. I have to talk to them to see. It. What the reason is for them? As this property is higher than here, so maybe the issue of having privacy is. Yeah, I mean this is the the side of the house that they're. I'm sorry, no, this stuff, this stuff, that side already, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the rest of the things, which is this drainage, is going down. That will be done. Yeah, conceivably, you could put. If animals an issue, you could put a fence here, can't you? You don't have to fence all the way up there. And the owner wants to put at the property line to secure his property. It's a hill. Yeah, it's not like it's much usable property yeah. out there. Because it will become an eyesore, I think. But is, is there any other types of fences that you think, um, as an architect, you might be willing to consider for us to discuss? Where? Here mm -hmm. or here? Uh, both. Well, uh, the code is that we have to use a decorative, decorative concrete block with matching dark color. That's the code. But uh, other than that, um, I cannot think of any other public stone or public stone. Um, thank you, Mr. Gopina. Uh, we did ask a lot of questions, so you could take a few more moments and address some of the other concerns if, if you have any other comments. If not, uh, uh, we'll see if the board has some other questions for you. Uh, issues like the complaint of Mr. Celio about the nose and smoke and things like this, I have no idea. I don't know how to do it, how to control it. And if there is a such a thing or not, but uh, uh, hopefully they will cooperate with this owner to repair this wall, which is in not in a good condition. Other than that, I can't remember anything else. Unless if you have any questions, do you have any uh, questions for the architect? I don't. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, since I don't have any other uh, speaker cards on this item, uh, we'll close uh, the public portion. Yes, can I make one other comment? Uh, 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 sure, if you would, come on up. State your name for the record once again. Okay. Uh, Bill Blocko. What I didn't get an answer for is the height of the wall that's at the uh, southern side of the property. Why does that have to be six feet tall? Well, uh, we can't really have cross uh, discussions. Okay. Well, I, I a, believe your question really pertains to what is the height of this fence along the front setback. Well, uh, the on the side, on, on the, the side of the house, house property. On the side. On the side. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm only concerned about the side, and it just seems like six feet 
is a fairly tall wall to run across there. You're not going to have any animals leaping over. The <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's the side of like oh, that. we, we can't have two people at the podium at the same time. It's being recorded. <laughs> anyway, Rabbi, that's, we that's we understand, understand your concern. Uh, if you would allow us, uh, you reiterated your concern, which is great. Uh, if you would allow this board to uh, start discussing the project okay. and all the different aspects of it will surface, uh, one being uh, the fence and other being some other things. Right. And then we might actually ask the architect to come up uh, to answer some specific questions that come up as well. Okay. How may I respond? You I will talk to the owner to see. Say your name for the record. Oh, my name is Edward Hagobian, yeah. 220 South Kenwood Street, Suite 210, Glendale, 91205. I will talk to the owner to see if she will or he will agree to match it to the same height of the wall we have on the other side. I believe their concern is the privacy because the next door neighbor on the right side, they are like several foot higher than us, so they overlook our property always. So if the privacy is an issue, maybe that's the reason that the owner is willing to put a six foot. Uh, I don't know. I have to talk to them to see, can we reduce it to five? Does that satisfy our neighbor? I don't know. See. Is, is the owner here? No, he's not. She's not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll uh, close the public portion of the hearing once again. Really? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Mr. Aliano, do uh, you want to start off this one? Sure. Um, you can start on the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm glad that the neighbors are here to express their concerns, and I think those can be negotiated probably amongst the neighbors and the owner. Um, from an architectural standpoint, you know, the balconies, the gentleman brought up the balconies in the rear overlooking their property. Perhaps we could have some screening um, along the edge. So there could be some screening in here. There's a very mature birds of paradise here. They're not much of a screen, but they could help a little bit. I think their concern is that people here are going to be able to pool area. So I think that could be a, a accomplished with some landscaping. Because of the mass of the building, I'm not very concerned. This neighbor actually had more impact on the mass than the southern neighbor. But again, because this is lower and they're higher, it's probably not that big a deal. Um, I do agree, I think, if there's something that could be done with this wall, because this wall actually continues, not only doesn't stop here, but it continues. And when you look at some of those aerial photographs, you know, the views in this direction, they kind of compromise all that nice uh, sort of natural landscape there that exists already. But there's a way to kind of mitigate some solution here with the neighbors, either lower or maybe do a different kind of wall. Um, I think those are the big things that came up. I, I think the other thing that came up, I think the gentleman with this side of the property brought up was, you know, this, which I, th I think he understood it as a wall, but it's not really a wall, it's a fence. But I, I think we should try to see if that could be avoided. I, I think this is very steep, and this fence here is going to be extremely obtrusive visually. I don't think it would look attractive at all. And I think when you look at those aerial shots, you'll see that the hillside is actually quite nice, the way it kind of meets the flat area of the properties, this one and all the, these three. So I would say if there's any way to secure the property down here, architecturally I think that would be preferable. So, you know, this wall, uh, you know, mitigating how to reconstruct that, I guess I would leave that up to the neighbors as well. But it's the wall, the views, screening, that um, those I think can be resolved. Uh, as far as the architects of the building, Mr. Govin has done a very nice job. It's a modest addition. I don't think but it's something that I would be alarmed about in terms of area that he's expanding. Um, I do only have one concern, which is that I think right now most of the houses there, uh, they have either shingles, some of them have tile, but the roof that Mr. Hagobin is proposing, I understand the reason is because uh, it's lightweight material, it's an aluminum material, but it is basically an imprint of a clay tile shape. So it's meant to look like clay tile, but it's actually not clay tile. Uh, it's, um, it's aluminum. 
Um, so to me, that's sort of a fake approach, and I don't know that it will make the house, uh, enhance the house. The house already has a very sort of simple approach, and by decorating it with the clay tile roof that doesn't really face, in addition, it's also a fake tile. I, I would suggest doing something simpler. I don't even, I wouldn't mind if you use even a nice sort of shingle or something that were a low profile. So that's really the only objection that I have. But other than that, I, I, I will support the project. So I'd like to hear your comments. Thank you, Mr. Oliano. Uh, uh, Mr. Ellis? Well, I think you hit most of my concerns also. I mean, um, I, I wasn't aware of the roof thing. I noticed that had been a little conversation earlier. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I, maybe the one thought that I had, and, and I do thank you, the neighbors, for showing up. Um, these are, the, I believe, the two the two balconies to the uh, <coughs> high right here, um, overlooking the pool at the uh, at the neighbor. Uh, there, maybe there's some way to not have the opening. I mean, they're open to the back. Is there a way to make something a little more opaque so the view is more to the back of the lot as opposed to off to the side? Um, I would suggest maybe a fence as opposed to a wall open along in here. And I think your idea of breaking it at the bottom of the property line makes a lot of sense. Um, I think I mentioned to the, the architect that they might want to look at the retaining wall that's existing along the front that seems to be falling down. But, um, I think with some of the suggestions that you had, I, I could support the project also. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ellis. I agree with uh, uh, I agree with my uh, <coughs> calling on that it's a, it's a very simple addition. Uh, the architect's done a very good job uh, designing it. Um, he's really followed um, the overall theme of the existing design, which is which is nice. Uh, it's always I think a, a good thing when the biggest issue is defense, because some of the bigger things we deal with on, on some of the other cases are uh, much larger in scale than the fence. So anytime the biggest opposition that a neighbor has is the fence. We believe that it's, it could be mitigated quite easily. Uh, I believe some of the suggestions that were made this evening uh, by both uh, Mr. Aliano and Mr. Ellis certainly address that. And uh, I know the architect is um, uh, trying to uh, come up and share some thoughts with the roof, which, which uh, you will in a minute. I just wanted to finish my thoughts and that uh, I think we certainly could uh, mitigate a lot of the privacy issues that uh, might occur with Mr. Seal's backyard with some landscaping as well. Um, of course, blocking um, the balcony really along here would certainly help as well. We could see what the architect's thoughts are on that. This balcony, of course, is set back 26 feet plus the setbacks. So it's about right. 30 feet back. Um, and, and also, it's the master bedroom. They could get some nice views out of sure. there as well. So we could maybe discuss the possibility of closing this uh, balcony up with the architect. But in general, some more landscaping here might just suffice. Um, we already talked about the, the front fence along the property, uh, along the street, could only really be 18 inches along the setback anyways on this portion. And it seems as though the architect uh, has suggested maybe a five-foot block wall along this property line might work as well. So I think the the really biggest question is, is what do we do about this rear portion here uh, up the hill? And um, maybe uh, um, I think a suggestion is uh, doing nothing and just leave it natural. And uh, maybe the architect could, or could come up with some other options. So I think in general I support the project as well. I think uh, with some of these um, uh, conditions we could mitigate a lot of the concerns that the neighbors have. So what I'd like to do is um, um, Call the architect up, uh, specifically uh, discuss what your thoughts are on um, the balcony, uh, the northern balcony, about blocking that view. No problem. Feel about that. Yeah. If you rather go down that route, or just literally mitigating with some larger landscaping between the ceilings and the. Whichever is, the neighbors feel come. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, convenient, we'll do it. It doesn't matter. And, and as far as uh, lowering the fence, um, this this portion of the block wall between the front setback and really where you know the contours start going up, maybe by a foot, 
Would that, you think, be something that... I don't know. The owners, the owner is insisting to have, <coughs> to have privacy from the next door neighbor, which is, I believe, if you look at the counters, you will see that that elevation difference is mm, about, I believe, 10 feet. So they overlook to the backyard always. So uh, that's well, a private... A six-foot wall wouldn't solve that. Uh, well, if it's not six foot, maybe five foot will do the job. Or and talk to the owners. To could see. you also, I mean, could you do it in here and not here? Because here, basically, it's that. You're really screening that. That's, that's, that's a good thought. Fine, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the views are actually in here. The privacy issue is really somewhere in here. Yes. This is already sloping, so we're talking about a little bit of an area here where you could probably have a taller wall here, but then keep this, I mean, I'm sorry, around here. Yeah, that's the right location. You know, if you could come up with a solution yeah. with your neighbors yeah. or their neighbors. Maybe a stepping wall that steps down ultimately okay. down. Yeah, the fine, edges. okay. There's uh, a blocking the balcony on that side, we can do it not all the way to the top, but right. maybe partially yeah, just to exactly. the eye level. Exactly. Yeah. I would like to introduce landscaping, because landscaping might actually be nice. You know, some vertical, columnar kind of trees or things sure. like that. Yeah. You know, I was just going to say, from looking at it, it doesn't appear that there's salt, because there's concrete pretty much. You know, there's not a lot of space here for landscaping. This side really screams that, hey, there's a lot of earth here. You could you could certainly sh uh, shield. Could you uh, do a pocket of some you sort know? here? Perhaps we can... I mean, Perhaps we can leave that as a consideration with options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. There is dirt. That was a little bit of dirt, I know. There right. dirt. They cool. could actually put a hedge here of some sort, just enough so that you're not looking. Because it seems like a pretty legitimate concern. Oh. Okay. And, and, and so then the last uh, issue then, of course, is the fence. Well, uh, before we get to the top fence, Mr. Agopian, I think you want to share with us some roof Yes, materials. I would like to share the thought about this uh, roof that we have. This is an excellent roof. This is the, one of the most expensive roofs. If you would, the, reason, uh, the main reason is that we don't want to ta change the whole roof, existing roof, which now we have uh, asphalt shingle on it, which is very light. This roof is even lighter than the asphalt shingle. And we have a wow. lot of these houses built in Glendale in the street, Greenbrier, I believe is the name of that street. It looks beautiful. I don't know why Mr. Aliano is <laughs> allergic about because that. Because we don't group. have um, a sample on the material. I do have the sample here, and I have please. the catalog, which is better than even sample, showing in a larger scale how it looks like. Okay. This is one unit of that, uh, that roof. And the other one sits on top. We always see this edge that Gerard. Mm, that makes some people to think of that this is something thick and heavy, but it's not. It's, uh, it's uh, aluminum, lifetime guarantee, and only the factory, they don't sell to others. They have to come and install themselves mm -hmm. because they know how to do it. And because of the lightweight, not only structurally is important, but also this doesn't absorb heat and cold. So it is in, in like six or seven years, they have estimated that it will uh, compensate the, uh, the, the difference of the price that they have to pay for this because this is more expensive than any other. Can I see your sample? Um, so it's like a like an uh, asphalt shingle, but it's got some texture in it. Is that? Yes. Well, in this case, I think he's proposing. You're proposing the, the clay tile roof, though, right? No, no, no. no this. Oh, that, no, that looks this like one. an asphalt yeah. shingle. Yeah. Okay. It's strange that we, we have a lot of houses in Glendale that are built like with this material, and uh, people don't know about that. That's it. I can give you the I'm address. Of you. Of <laughs> there you go. It's like the asphalt shingle that's been bolded, right? <laughs> well, uh, do we have a... Um, the owner doesn't like the asphalt shingle. No, I well, I, mean, I wouldn't. I don't blame no. him because you know how it is. Right. No, but I mean, it strikes me if you don't like asphalt shingle, you'd go a direction away from it as opposed to an asphalt shingle that's got some texture squeezed into it. But you know, uh, is there anything else you wanted to add, no, Mr. Thank you. thank you very much. And. Um,
So I believe we were able to, um, uh, yes, Ms. Reich. Uh, I think there's one more issue that we'd like clarification on, and that is the location of the back fence. There was some discussion about that. That was the last item I was going to bring up. Oh, <laughs> so I think there's just one item remaining, which is the back fence. Um, I won't, Mr. Aliano was suggesting no fence at all, maybe moving the fence at the bottom. And um, I, I could support that. <laughs> it, it will definitely jump off that hillside when there's no other structure on the hillside. I agree. Okay. Um, so then, in conclusion, I guess uh, uh, we're going to make some con uh, the architect to consider putting some yeah. landscaping between the ceilings and and the subject property. Uh, the architect to raise. Um, the opening of that balcony facing the ceilings to a higher level, just above eye level, um, to of course have just an 18 inch retaining wall along the front setback um, facing the other property, and uh, to have a, a five foot um, block wall just in that one portion, um, which Mr. Ayana pointed out, and I think staff could re you know work with the applicant on that and then uh, to um, just alleviate the fence on the on the hill altogether. So um, Ms. Reich, uh, uh, or the staff want to go over some of these uh, conditions and... Yeah, I can go over. Yeah, uh, one last um, thing. Before Jolet reads them back, I just wanted to ask, uh, is it an option to have landscaping or uh, enclose that balcony or is the board asking for both? I would strongly support dealing with closing the opening okay. as opposed to just making it a landscaping requirement. Very good. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, make it an okay. I mean, I, you know, if he does it with something that you just can't see through, yeah, his suggestion of doing it, leaving it open at the top is fine, you know, but just make it that it's less of a view. But now, but when they stand here, though, see if you close this opening. You still have this issue here, right? Sure, but I think if you look on where the layout of the the property is, that's past their backyard and pool too. It just it might not be. I don't know. I think that's it'd be the nice. first floor, right? It's just standing. That's the first floor, right? You were on this one. No, it's the bottom. I just wonder how it would feel for somebody next, to sit next here one down. and have. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep getting. <laughs> uh, how it would feel to stand that. here and have this thing completely closed out? Well, that that's what I would suggesting is not close it out but just opaque it. I mean is it is it some structural thing? Is it you know I, I, so, but so there's an option to do some kind of translucent panel or there are other options but that it should not be visible below the five foot mark essentially. Yes. Okay. And I would let you know the architect and the applicant figure you know what works for them but you know trying to push the view toward the back as opposed to the side. But it could be a combination of both, though. Couldn't it could be. If they decide they want to do landscaping at a distance and deal with the opening, I think that's special. Well, that, that was my question, because right. I'm, I'm wondering if, because I'm here, we're hearing from board member Ellis that we'd like to have both landscaping and close that opening rather than give the applicant a choice. My preference is, as design review is what is involved with the structure if it's, you know, plan check, you guys see that, that's very black and white. Saying that we'd like them to plant something to screen it is a little more open and I think, you know, I, I think you'll have less of an issue. The landscaping is subject to our review. Yeah. Um, I think the architect already agreed and, and perhaps closing off that portion of the balcony that overlooks the ceilings and then let's make a cons consideration for the landscaping, and I'm sure it'll be easy enough to do, and it'll actually make a nicer backyard, anyways. And um, and so besides that, there was just um, I think one more, uh, Mr. Aliano. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Well, we're dealing. I think you already have the screening for this balcony. Uh, there's the five foot lowering the this fence to the south, to perhaps five feet, and limiting it to a, to the most to the western. End of it. In the other area, that's not that portion, particular portion. Is there a height that the board would like to limit 
the fence to or ask for an open fence we'll to allow it to be six feet? I think an open fence would be better there. Okay, so so that the configuration of the fence could essentially remain the same, but the portion that is, uh, th that there's only a small portion that, that could be solid. Well, and then it might look funny, though, if we have a solid portion, then nothing. Whereas in the stepping they down. They could alternate. They could do some solids and some mm -hmm. open, you know. That also there would be fine. fencing, perhaps, right. between fencing, and then at a certain point it would turn solid where that privacy becomes an issue. Right. I think they can work that out. I the architect uh, wants to add another uh, word, and he might actually want to maybe make a suggestion. Mr. Hagopian, if you would. <laughs> yeah. Edward Hagopian, yeah. Uh, what do you want that landscaping to be is exactly where that broken wall is. No, we're talking about the south side. We're talking about the I center. I believe that's the side, yes. This side. Oh, no, no. I'm no, talking no. about others. We're, talking about, we're, yeah, about we're past that. that side. We're past that one. No, but I think, he's, there no, I think he still has the question, no. so. Oh, I'm I sorry. think you were, you're putting your finger on top where the, may I come and close and show that? No, I understand what you're talking about. You're talking about this wall here. What are we going to do about whether you're going to rebuild this wall? That's the problem. You you want me to do some landscaping there, but that's where the, that broken wall is. That's why right. we're leaving it as, a, as I think we have it as an, as as an, an option. option. If it's you want to put landscaping in to, to provide more screening, then that's Okay, an if option. it's an option, hopefully so we, were talking about we can come thing. up with an agreement with right. the neighbor to repair that wall. Right, but we were talking about this wall here. We were saying make it solid only right about here, Fine, yeah. okay. and then this could be more a combination of maybe solid and, and, well, and I, I, open. I'm confused about something. Uh, the block wall between the subject property and, and the seals is inside your property. Yes. So if you replace that wall, existing wall with a new block wall... Uh, we cannot touch it because the roof of the uh, heater is sitting a, on top. Yeah, they have a structure. You touch it, will come I'm down. sure they'll fix that for you if you're replacing the wall. <laughs> I suggested to them, but I haven't heard from them yet. Okay. Um, and while the architect is available, do we want to verify the location of that back wall? Because I, I'm concerned that that might be. Uh, oh, right here. No, the, the perimeter the backyard. Yes. No. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Well, I would say let's get this fence down here and leave leave this natural. But well, let's give them the option if they want to put a fence in the rear. Let, let's. We're not going to have a Thank fence you. on the hillside. Yes, that we're not going to have a fence up there. Right. right. Now, if they want to put one at the yeah, bottom of the exactly. slope, right. it's up to, that's up to them. Yeah, they exactly. They can choose yes. to one or not. Yeah, I, I think that's what. Yeah. His I point prefer point. not to have the fence, but if they want to have a fence, at the foot of the the foot of the slope is right. fine. Right. So that, and then I think the only thing left was uh, the roof. I, you know, if the board feels okay with the. Oh, I was uh, better with it before I saw it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to uh, kill the project because of it, but I, I, uh, I, I don't know if that, that would look better than a shingles roof. But well, it'll have a different shadow line than a, just a flat shingle roof. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm not crazy enough about it to, to you know to change it. I mean, I, if that's what the applicant wants. Uh, and it, it meets code here. I'm indifferent so, on the on the yeah. That's fine. I think so we can you guys feel strongly I, about it. I, I might suggest they try a different color other than asphalt shingle well, color. But I'm, I actually feel better about it than before because I thought you were doing faux clay tile, but now oh. you're saying that it's actually more of a shingle looking. Oh. Right. It's not really a. It's not shingle looking. We can't no, have no, cross. No. We, uh, we can't have cross communication. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm okay with a roof if, if you're. Right. But you're, the, the applicant is calling for that particular material, but it's not to look like a clay tile roof, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, not what. Isn't the it color to look sample is. like the sample that you were just holding? Is it going to look just like the sample you gave us? Yes. Okay, and that's not a clay tile looking roof. Yeah. Okay, and I'm okay. I'm, I feel better about it. I still don't like it, but I'm not going to change the project. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move forward. <laughs> let's move forward because we've spent quite a bit of time okay. on this uh, I'd project like to make a that motion. was not as complex as the other yeah. one. I'd like to move to approve the project with the comments that we just uh, described. Um, Sir Aliana, um, motion to, for the project to be approved with following comments. Um, the wall 
to the south of the site should be either lowered or in consultation with neighbor, a mutual agreement should be arrived at. This could mean a combination of solid and see-through fences. The railing to the balconies on the north elevation should be made solid to mitigate problems with overlooking the neighbor's pool. Okay. I think that's a second floor balcony. Is that um, on the south? On the south? South uh, east. I think it's north. Well, yeah, so it would be the north elevation. Yeah, it's north elevation. Which which yeah. element is that? Uh, According to the site, that one, is yes. The north, that one right oh, there. Right, 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 right. That balcony yeah. right there. Right. So the railing to the balcony on the north elevation should be made solid to mitigate problem with overlooking the neighbor's pool. I think you said opaque or solid, right? That I could say that. Opaque, opaque or solid. Opaque is probably a better word. Oh, yeah. Because then they can use glass or whatever. Okay. And uh, landscaping should be provided to mitigate neighbor's concern with privacy. Either remove the fence to the rear of the site or bring it forward towards the house. At the bottom, At of, the the bottom of the hill. Shall I? I think the landscape was optional. Right. I was just, um, the, lands, the additional landscape was a consideration, okay. I believe. Consider, uh, okay. Consider additional landscaping, etc. Okay. So is there a second? I'll second. And actually, is the board fine with the um, record of decision language that was provided in the staff I can uh, read all, go over it. Or Please, that would be great. Please. You would like me to I'm read it? Please, I didn't memorize it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I have it next time. I didn't memorize it. <laughs> Overall, the site plan is well conceived. The footprint of the proposed house at the first floor will change on the east and west side of the house while maintaining the existing street front setback. The site plan continue to fit well within the context of the neighborhood, a majority of which is two-story homes with consistent street front setback and attached garages facing street. Overall, the impact of the proposed addition on the adjacent properties and the street is minimized due to the openings in the proposed patios. There will be no decrease in the street front setback. The project relates well to the mass uh, and scale of the adjacent buildings in terms of height and floor area ratio, which is average for the neighborhood and is therefore appropriate to the surrounding context. Overall, the style of the proposed building fit well within the neighborhood. The height of the building will not increase, and the proposed patios allows for more consistent elevations on all sides. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, this is the roll call. <clears throat> Board member Aliana? Yes. Board member Ellis? Yes. Chairman Simonian? Yes. Motion passes by 3-2-0. Thank you. And I just wanted to conclude very uh, quickly. If you would, Mr. Seeley, um, uh, do get in touch with the applicant and try to solve that fence issue as quickly as possible so when they're going through the process, they'll have some clear direction as to uh, uh, how you two neighbors are going to work that out. I think I would like to suggest mm -hmm. also, which I think we probably should have made a part of the record, is that they also get together with the neighbor to the south to figure out, you know, that opening, you know, the, the fence. We haven't given you a dimension or... If, let's see, if I may, um, the, the reason for these public hearings are to give definitive uh, direction to the applicant rather than refer them to the neighbors. So I would actually recommend we strike that language in the condition to meet with the neighbors and provide that clear direction. If we think that that clear direction has not been provided, I would, I would suggest we may want to reopen and make sure that clear direction has okay. been provided. It then I, I think we should reopen the, the direction. The meeting, because uh, I think that should have been in the wording. Okay. I mean, I, because we're, we're setting an arbitrary location, and then the neighbor may still not be satisfied mm -hmm. with what we're doing. That we're we're doing this to make sure that everybody's happy, and uh, unless we can give them an actual dimension on the drawing, then can we do that? Here's what I suggest. We've been on this project for an hour and right. twenty minutes, so let's. 
uh, quickly in a few minutes, I suggest let's mark up the site plan exactly where we believe that fence should start it and based on all the input that we received from everybody and, and let's just uh, uh, have the architect go with that and, and work with staff to finalize right, things. Well, let's, let's give them more definite. It's interesting. I was just looking at the height of that wall as proposed is about 20 feet above the driveway level by the time you get up the hill and the top of the wall. I mean, it's quite a ways up. There. I mean, if we say, you know, basically all of this means a solid portion. Mm -hmm. Which is what I think I was envisioning as well. Right. So let's say solid. Five feet tall, right? And now that will meet my, my requirements. Are you running from? Would it be possible to make a comment? Uh, I, it's up to the chairman. I'd yes, if you would. And state your name for the record. Uh, uh, Bill Blocko, again, I'm, I'm the neighbor on the, uh, the right side. The dimensioning that you've drawn there, uh, in our home, there's only one window on that north wall. And right now, if you were to look out the north window, we can't even see their pool. <laughs> So, uh, you know, to drag that down 20 feet, I don't think is really necessary. But we can look at it out at the yard or we can get together with the neighbors and talk about it. But I don't see where they're going to be gaining any more privacy than they have now. Is it because of landscaping that you don't see their pool or just the way the, the lot and your window? The way the lot, are, even though out. our lot is elevated and they're going to be adding, you know, a dimension there on that side anyway. Uh, and less chances. And there's even less chance of, of, of us, even, anybody right. even looking into that property. So right. I guess that, that just supports my concern about the size of the wall. I don't think it's, it's really gaining anything. It may enclose and give them some privacy. Uh, but from a viewing standpoint, as I say, we've only got one window on that wall anyway. So, And it's, it's set more toward the street than toward the back of the lot. Anyway, that's the only comment I had. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it seems as though uh, this is a rare occurrence where we have a project where there's so much discussion about the fence. I don't remember the <laughs> last time there was so much uh, discussion about fences. So, so <clears throat> yeah, so, so obviously this is an important uh, matter to the both neighbors. So we're taking it seriously. We're going to spend the time to solve it. Um, the feeling I'm getting is... Uh, no, Whatever the location of that wall is that Mr. Aliano just located is going to cause some issues with with the adjacent neighbor, and and it's somewhat odd to have a portion of a solid wall along the property line and then the rest of it just be open. So perhaps the best thing to do is just if it's causing this much concern is just to get rid of that wall along that property line. And, and, and the architect's saying no. Well, so so well, maybe then just make it an open fence as opposed to a six-foot block wall. But it's supposed to be a screening. It's supposed to be a way to, because I can understand their point. They're in their backyard. They feel like, you know, people are looking down into their backyard. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it could be landscape. It could be a hedge. Yeah, you, plenty of land to landscape. Could it be a hedge? Is a hedge? That's right. I mean, at least it's a green material and five foot hedge. Yeah, we're, or however high they want to grow it. Because I don't think there's a control well, we over the height of the Let's make a decision, I think. Uh, I, I, I would support an open fence with hedge as opposed to a block wall. Second that. Yeah, I. I'm in, all, in all fairness, uh, I, I let Mr. Backhope come up. So uh, we're going to solve this. So, Mr. Gopi, if you would come up. Just on the fair side, both sides should. Care. I don't understand what is the big issue with this 20, 25 feet long, uh, five feet high uh, wall. What? Why our neighbor disagrees with that? We want to have a privacy, as Mr. Aliano said. I guess from from my comment would be that the the neighbor who lives there mentioned they have one window on that side of their house that's not even anywhere near the back. You're adding on to your back side of your house, which is making your pool area even more private because you're moving out the wall of the house on it. Yeah, but they can um, walk to the backyard and... Uh, right. 
Well, they, they can look, certainly look over a five-foot black wall, too, right? The, the intention of these hearings, of course, Mr. Hagopian, is, is, is to try to come up with some compromise with everyone in the, in the area to, to keep everyone satisfied and to keep neighbors happy with one another, have good relationships with one another going forward. And, and so we've uh, exhausted all this time and efforts with staff and ourselves is to try to come up with a compromise between the applicant and the neighbors. Um, and it seems as though whichever direction this board goes, someone's unhappy. Uh, we have Mr. Bakov unhappy, Mr. Seeley still has not said what he's going to do with his uh, pool uh, shed, and Mr. Hagopian's not happy. So now we have three unhappy candidates that are involved with this, with this matter. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to close the public portion. We're going to take a few minutes, and as a board, we're going to make a decision, and hopefully we'll have two happy par uh, individuals and one unhappy individual. Are you sure I, that this legally is okay for design board to, to uh, decide about a wall between two neighbors? Uh, we're not sure, but we'll let staff handle that question. But what I'm going to do at this point is close the public portion, Thank you. if you would. I, I can't take any more because we have to end it at some point. And uh, so um, Mr. Sheely has his hand up, but um, we're just yeah, going to <laughs> He's the only one who hasn't said anything. <laughs> But no, it's not to do with this wall. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. Wall. Not to wall. Just, Thank you. Just to let you know that um, a, a wall of this nature, a side wall of this nature, would not even need a building permit. And to, if it came in without the rest of the addition of the house, it would not even be under design review. So I just wanted to let you to to let you know that that Wait, that Mr. piece. Give, give us some direction and help us along. Well, it's hard for us to give you direction. We didn't, you know, we didn't mention the wall uh, in our staff report because it's not unusual for a property to have a six-foot-high side yard wall. It's perfectly, we think, honestly, that it's not very high. It's perfectly reasonable so at that staff, location. So staff believes that a wall along that property line from five to six feet is certainly appropriate and, and, and would not require a permit as you uh, suggested. And, and we just would not like to see this have to come back because the owner wants to have the right to place the wall there. Okay. Very good. Mr. Seeley, uh, if you would come up, you have, uh, if you would just uh, quickly in 30 seconds state your uh, Thoughts. Hi, George Seeley. Um, I guess that wall you would see um, from my point of view on my pictures, you'd scale that my wall, you'd look across that other wall, and she must be referring to walls between neighbors that grade, not halfway up a wall to put a wall up here. So if you have a wall in the middle of a hill, and they're saying it's 20 foot above the street, I'm going to look straight across and see this wall, so that wall's got to be um, a pretty wall. Or neat. Um, and blend in pretty well. Okay. And um, with my wall, I'm concerned, you know, as it is now, it's probably got to be like an adobe wall that would, you know, it looks nice between both. I think his wall in the front yard is adobe also, so something like that. Mm -hmm. um, like we a would split consider. face, split face uh, block wall. Is that what you mean by adobe? Right. The color adobe and it's kind of a, I don't know if you can find it anymore, but I think you could probably can. Okay. That was my only comments. Yeah. I think we're, okay, very good. Thank you. Mr. Aliano. I, let's, let's close. I think I have to agree with that. I think that's part of the reason why I have an issue with that wall is because when you look at those pictures, that wall has an aesthetic impact on the whole, on the slope area. It's going to be so tall that, and look at this picture, you will see that wall coming all the way across and hitting the hillside. Yeah. So it has an impact. I think if, we, if the issue is screening and the issue is privacy and concern that animals might be coming down, which in that case you won't because you have another neighbor next to it, let's, you know, I think uh, I would say a fence with a hedge in it or some kind of planting material will, will do just fine. At least from a distance you'll see green rather than a solid block wall. But as Ms. Reich said, we could agree to that, and they can come back a few months later and build a wall there, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. So we're making a lot of fuss probably for nothing. Mm -hmm. And but So we can have that in the motion. We can say, if you want to have that, that element there, we suggest uh, an open fence with green, green material, you know, a hedge, mm -hmm. and then whatever they do after that, and then there's nothing we can do about it. 
And I think one should do it in the interest of being a good neighbor and make sure that everybody gets along. So that's what I would go. And I, <coughs> I'd just like to keep the same motion with that verbiage uh, integrated. In, into integrated. And we're going to move forward. Okay. So we have to take a roll call again uh, because we did change the motion. Well, why don't we go ahead and make a roll call, we'll take a roll call one more time, and sure. we'll proceed to the next case. You want to hear the um, – how's it worded? Well, well, I would put uh, I would go you got it. Okay. consider um, open fences with uh, landscaping hedge with uh, hedge. five foot hedge or some sort. Yeah, and that's a condition, not a consideration. Oh. Yeah, I can make it a condition, but then what would happen? Well, once you make that a condition here. Uh, I don't believe the applicant can vary from that. Okay, let's then let's make it a condition. Okay. So um, the motion was made by uh, Board Member Aliano and uh, second by Board Member Ellis. This is the roll call. Board Member Aliano. Yes. Board Member Ellis. Yes. Chairman Simonian. Yes. Motion passes by three to zero. Thank you. Thank Again. you. Again. All right, well, we finally move on to the next take case. Take a three-minute break. So, uh, sure, let's take a quick five-minute break, right. and then we'll proceed with our last case for the evening. Okay.
Yes. All right. I think we're ready. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. The next item before you uh, this evening is design review uh, PDR 2008-033-A. It's a review of a proposal to construct an 880-square-foot, one-story second dwelling unit and two two-car garages, uh, um, two, two two-car attached garages. Um, an existing one-car garage and block wall adjacent to the East Elk Avenue uh, street will be demolished as a result of the project. Let me go over with you what's on the board. Mm -hmm. Up here is the uh, site plan uh, sort of uh, landscape map here. here. Adams is here, Elk is here, the existing house is here, and the new development is here. Garage here, garage here, and then the new second unit. This is a detail of the gate elevation. Actually, this is the site plan. It shows you the existing unit. And the, the floor plan, existing unit, garage, new unit, and garage with the uh, sort of Entry court. Roof plan is here. Perspective rendering here. This is the view from um, Adams. And this is the view from Elk. And then these are the two interior. The proposed second dwelling unit and two car garages will be built in a U-shaped configuration opening onto East Elk Street. The garages, one of which will be attached to the existing residence, will form the legs of the U. The wing, wall, uh, wing walls will extend from the two car, two garages and along with the proposed uh, automatic gate will enclose the court. And I pointed out the detail of that gate. The new residential unit will connect the two, car the two garages. Given that the front door of the new unit faces East Elk Avenue and the private and common open spaces for both units are located in the southern portion of the site, staff is suggesting to reduce the height of the proposed wing walls and gate to 42 inches in height instead of the proposed six feet, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah and provide decorative paving or grass creek instead of the proposed masonry within the driveway to better engage the project with the adjacent street and to provide a more pleasant view from the new residence. A minimum of 25% of the site is required to be landscaped. As proposed, the project complies with this requirement. The plant palette includes uh, Sebastian grass, mixed roses, um, pampas grass, mixed dahlias, or dahl dahlias, I'm sorry, and domestic vegetation. The existing concrete walkway leading to the front door of the existing residence will be replaced with a masonry walkway. Masonry is also proposed adjacent to the uh, existing residence and East Elk Avenue within the two common open areas in the entry court. The landscaping as proposed uh, appears overly, sim overly simplistic, and staff is rec recommending that a landscape architect be employed to design the on-site landscape areas to complement the style of the existing residents in the proposed project. While the proposed project will intensify the use of the site, the mass and scale will not significantly change, and it is, uh, it is appropriate for the site and in context with the neighborhood. The existing residence is modest, is a modest craftsman style bungalow uh, containing wood siding, wood divided light windows with wood trim and a com composition shingle roof. The project proposes materials that will match the existing residence. The materials with the exception of the composition roof are consistent with and re reinforce the craftsman style. Two windows on the new uh, residential unit, the den and bathroom facing the entry court, however, appear to be sliding windows which aren't consistent with this style of architecture and should be modified to be consistent. Mm -hmm. The two, or I'm sorry, the new wing walls will be faced with stucco 
The design of the gate as well as the decorative pieces above the wing walls uh, mimic the design of the divided light windows. Staff met with the applicants, uh, the applicant prior to submittal of the project. At this meeting, staff conveyed that the overall location of the building on, on the site was appropriate, but suggested moving the trash recycling area to a more convenient location, reducing the height of the gate uh, wing, wing wall, enclosing the uh, entry court, and proposing an alternative paving material. The revised plans have relocated the trash recycling area and the latter two condition, the latter two suggestions have been made conditions of approval for the project. Staff is recommending <coughs> approval of the project with four conditions. Would you like me to go over those conditions? Or? Please, please. Sure. Okay. The first condition, the wing walls and automatic gate shall be reduced to 42 inches in height. Are you clear on? Yeah, right here. Yes, correct. But now they're 46. I believe with the um, 48 plus 70, so it's 72 to the top. So right. You want, you want that to be 42. Correct. The whole height. Okay. Right. The second condition is grass creek decorative paving or similar treatment shall be installed in the entry court. The third condition uh, is a landscape plans designed by a landscape architect shall be submitted to staff for review and approval. And then the uh, final uh, the final condition is the two windows facing the entry court shall be changed to more appropriately fit the craftsman style. Um, question on that last comment. Sure. The drawing shows uh, some kind of a casement window here. Mm. But there's no schedule, so I can't tell. Right here. Oh, you're right. Um, actually, um, yeah, I was referring to these two Someone. windows, oh, okay. which it's are here, and you don't I see right, right here. here. Yeah. yeah, those are not here. To the left okay. of that shot, there's okay. it's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the rest of the wall. Okay. Did the board have any what other What was questions? number two? I missed number two. Uh, Grass Creek decorative paving or similar treatment shall be installed in the entry court. Right, excellent, thank you. Uh, one question is um, the existing uh, fence that's yes. along um, uh, the property line over there. Right. It, is the applicant proposing to relocate that wall or are, the, are those walls and that gate simply staying in its current location? It, it's my understanding that they'll be demolished. They'll be demolished and then right. replaced. Right. I think it's in tighter than uh, I was looking. I thought it was marked on here. It's in the setback. If you look on the, the site plan, you can see how. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. you see how it looked like they were into the setback. Got it. All right. Okay. And where were they moving the waste container? The the trash you mentioned. Is it? Uh, you know? It's now in the corner, the far corner of the lot, and to be honest with you, I cannot Is remember. Is that it up here? Yeah. Where was it before? To be honest with you, I, I can't remember. Because that seems like, oh, that's a hike. Okay. It, it's, it is a hike from the front from the unit. Front. However, yeah. um, th there's a gate on that side right near the... Yeah, I see So that. it's convenient to get to, to, get get to the street. Yeah. yeah, I see that part. Uh, do we have any more questions for staff? I don't believe I do. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, our only speaker is the applicant, uh, Levon uh, Kanjian. Good evening, member of the board. Uh, my name is Levon Kanjian. Uh, I'm the designer of the project. My office is at uh, 811 Pelanconi Avenue, Glendale, California, 91202. Uh, I went with Mr. Roger through the, over the plans and uh, originally we were planning to do almost uh, 1,200 square foot house but because of the garage situations we, have, we need four garages we could not uh, satisfy the owner so we reduced it to 880 square foot. Uh, regarding uh, the fence, I'm glad that my fence, uh, it will not be as a problem 
like the project before us. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, we had six feet high uh, gate with uh, black walls. Now we reduced it to four feet, and we create a f metal gate that matches plus and minus the existing windows design. And we left the top part open so we can see through. It doesn't look like a block. Uh, about the landscape architect, I, my opinion, I know it's not that important, but uh, we don't really need a landscape architect uh, for now. Unless if you insist on it, then uh, we have to go through it. And uh, that two window that uh, the staff was talking about, uh, if uh, I can approach the... Of course, yes, please. Uh, I think the pointer's not a... Thanks. Regarding this window, uh, that's the restroom window, which is uh, right here. So you, we need a ventilation for that window, for that uh, restroom. That's why I had to put this window here. I think the question is to make it look more like an arts and crafts and not make it like a, you know, a, a bathroom window, you know, that you normally see in a... Well, what we did is uh, take the same angles and create... Uh, the same design, the same windows. Uh, you could do a square window, you know, do like a little awning. Well, the existing is swinging, so that's why we went swinging. But those are not swinging, those are sliders, aren't they? No, no, swinging. That's why we had division here, divided. Is that These are swinging right here? No, that's, that's not. That's the one he's talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there you can maybe just do one. I can, I, I can do only one. You can no make it a, a hopper or a hopper. I can yeah. match this one if you want. Right. I mean, that's okay. That's more yeah, in the spirit of the I have no problem with that. Right. I have, a, I have a question for you, sir. Existing on the front porch uh, along Adams, there's security fencing and gratings and grills on the windows and things. Is, are you planning to leave those? Is that all going to come off? No, no security, no security uh, metal uh, gates or something, nothing. That's existing is coming off, is what you're saying. Sorry? Is it right now? When I, I just went by a couple hours ago, it seemed to me that there was, you know, it was security fencing and windows along these windows, and then there was a railing, uh, which looks different than what you have here. Is that the existing? That's the existing. Yeah, that's, that's the existing railing. And that's going to get painted white or what? Right, because it's a little rusted and. And we reduced the. Uh, <coughs> The existing walkway or whatever it was, so we reduced it so it doesn't look, the front doesn't look uh, completely uh, concrete. Right. <laughs> we changed all concrete to... Yeah, it looked like a drive through until I looked yeah. at it and realized <laughs> it wasn't. But So you're replacing all that? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, making it smaller, shorter. Right. I noticed there was quite a lot of concrete damage to this curb. That's no, a small thing. We can, we can always fix them. So. Okay. But the, the fence on the front porch is staying, is that? Yes. What, what is the what are the existing windows? What are they made of? Wood. What are you doing for the new? Wood. They're yeah. matching exactly wood. Yeah. I spoke okay. I spoke with uh, uh, I believe she was Stephanie. Uh, her name was Stephanie. She said no 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 we we don't like we like the windows this way and we like to keep them. Yeah. So. That's why we like Stephanie. <laughs> I mean, we even wanted we even wanted to, to start with the place, but uh, we could we did not have the green light for it. Good, <laughs> okay, that's okay. Good. All right. Uh, does uh, you're the applicant, and uh, the owner does the owner plan on living in the house? Yes. And, and um, was the what was uh, was the main reason for creating this gate? Because they have children or something like that? Was it for pri Which privacy gate? or safety reasons? Yeah. The driveway gate that you proposed that's oh, private. Was, I mean, do, they have, go in do they have children or anything like that? Yes. That's, and is that the reason why you'd like to have a higher gate? Well, we're not making a tire. I mean, uh, we have uh, four, 
48 inches gate or yeah. four feet, and this is extra metal gate. But staff is recommending that you lower that. Okay. That's one of their recommendations. And How so much uh, rule we can do? <laughs> In order for me to understand um, all the factors that relate to that gate, I I'm asking if they have children. If so, um, yeah, the children, children playing in the courtyard is that yes. because of it's a very visible street and it's a very busy street. So is that the reason of ha having a high gate? That, that's what I was trying to ask you. Well, they have children. That's for uh, they have uh, how many children? We have three, two, and uh, whoever maybe if they rent that place, uh, they will have a children too. That's two bedroom. So privacy is number two and uh, security is number one. <laughs> I actually like the design of the gate. It's quite nice. It matches the craftsman style. Yep. Okay. What's it made out of? The gate's a metal? Metal, yeah. And that, these are solid panels, right? Those, are those solid those panels? Those are solid. Those are open. And now those are open. Do we have any more questions for the applicant? Thank you. Uh, would you like to speak on this case as well since you're the only one out there? No? Uh, very good. Well, uh, we have no more uh, speaker cards on this item, and so therefore the public portion is closed. Um, Mr. Aliano started the last one, Mr. Ellis, <laughs> so you get to start this one. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, the applicant has done a pretty nice job taking a house, which many times we'd, we see bulldozed and in a completely new stucco box. So I applaud you on sticking with the style of the, of the existing thing and improving on it. Um, I don't really have a, a whole lot of issues. I mean, I, I did ask you a little bit about the fence and stuff in the front porch. It did look very much out of character on the house, and it seemed that if you're going to put the time and money into to improve it as much, you might want to reconsider uh, the fencing and, you know, on that front porch just didn't fit the, the house, I thought. Um, and I would support the staff's recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Uh, Mr. Aliano? Yes, um, I'd like to support the staff comments as well and, and yours, Mr. Ellis. Uh, I'd like to add one more thing, and that has to do with uh, the court. Um, I'm just concerned, even just by looking at the perspective, that unless you start introducing some small landscape pockets in there, even if you do the the paving, like Mr. Kiesel uh, suggested, um, I think it might still feel a bit austere in there because it's all hardscape and then these walls are just die right into the ground. So I was thinking, you know, one simple way to treat, to take care of this is um, if there's any way to create some small pockets here or maybe here and there near the front door and be able to maybe perhaps just do a small just a very shallow, very not shallow, but not very um, um, a, a, a trellis that's not very wide and doesn't overhang too much. Maybe you could do some corbels of some sort that kind of works with the whole thing. Uh, just a small piece, and maybe it hangs a little bit, and have some vines and things kind of grow on that. It creates some kind of landscaping at that end, so the nice does seem some greenery coming off the ground and be able to sort of you know, treat that. That way, so you have some landscaping here and landscaping basically right, maybe a horizontal plane, maybe about two and a half feet to three feet overhang, some kind of a trellis, uh, just in this portion, and again, trying to bring some lines, you know, wisteria, any kind of line that could have some good mass that would, that would, uh, that would treat that differently. So, other than that, I'm glad that you're. Matching the windows and you're matching the, the siding and all that. I think it's a very nicely done project. The scale is small and very um, um, very human. I think you did a good job. So I'm in support of the project, and uh, I also like again to support uh, the staff's comments. Thank you, Mr. Aliano. I could support this uh, project as well. I uh, like to really applaud uh, the designer for doing such a good job with depicting 
the style of the building and really illustrating it on the elevation. It's, it's done very nicely, uh, especially the black and white sketches uh, are done uh, uh, with a lot of detail and a lot of care, and they uh, certainly portray what's there, and uh, it's done quite nicely. Uh, the zoning on the property is uh, R2250, so it's a multifamily zone property. Uh, the, the lot is a 7,600 square foot lot, so um, the zoning does allow for three units on this building. And so the applicant has really taken on the opposite approach, and they've really taken on the existing home, a craftsman home. They've renovated it. They're going to spend a lot of money on the windows and doors to make it look authentic. And, in fact, the addition uh, mimics the style as well. So it's, it's, it's done quite nicely, and, and I appreciate that. As far as um, the recommendations are concerned, um, I, I uh, so agree with recommendations two, three, and four. Recommendation number one, however, uh, I think as though uh, the architect has done such a good job with depicting this um, gate elevation, and it works quite nicely. There's the solid portion, and then there is also some solid within the metal. And, and it is on in the busier part of town. And so based on their approach of really adding on another unit in the back and not just developing it into a three-unit project doesn't leave a lot of backyard in, in this project. And so I was asking the questions about the children and stuff is because, you know, if, if they are playing in the backyard or if they are uh, whether they're playing with uh, a soccer ball or whatnot, um, or if there's just a lot of people walking up and down those streets, which they are because it is uh, the area of town it is, it is kind of nice to have that peace of mind that you have a little buffer there along that busy sidewalk street. And, and so that's why um, I was asking those questions, and uh, I was pleased that with the design of the gate, frankly. So. Uh, I might be the only one in, in this group, uh, but I would uh, venture to see if we could uh, perhaps maintain the gate as illustrated in, in the drawings in that same height. Uh, but as far as uh, Mr. Aliano's comments, it would be very nice to have some sort of a trellis above that entrance with some sort of a bougainvillea or whatnot growing up on it um, that I think would soften it up. And, and with um, grasscrete, I think it would look quite nice with the craftsman style as well. So. Um, I support this project uh, um, with, I guess, uh, 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 a comment that we could maybe consider keeping the gate in its current uh, illustrated manner. And um, I know the architect wants to uh, can maybe say a word, and, uh, can but I wanted to see what the board felt about that. Would I like to defer back to, to staff and just ask what their thought was on that? I mean, how did that come about? Sure. Our, th our thought was uh, since... Two, two things. Um, since the common and open space spaces of both of of those of the units was in the, if it would be the southern part of the lot, away from Elk, mm -hmm. and the fact that the new unit front door of the unit new unit faces Elk Avenue, our thinking was, you know, let's open that up a little bit to the street mm -hmm. and a lower uh, wall and gate would would do that. Mm -hmm. I think both arguments are good. Yours Aye. is good and his is good. It's just a matter of how they're going to use that space, you know. Mm -hmm. If it is kind of a backyard, I say, you know, Mr. Uh, I don't know. Okay. The, the applicant wanted to uh, make a comment, so it might be on this subject, in fact. My name is Levon again. Uh, like every American house, uh, they're going to put a basketball uh, uh, shootout <coughs> things or something. I mean, children will, will play there instead of uh, in that uh, garden area. That's why we wanted to make it a little bit higher. Uh, we're not asking for six feet high black wood or something, but we're trying to make it uh, light, see-through, and uh, 
not having all those things. And uh, regarding the planter that Mr. Valiano said, can we put the uh, uh, climbing uh, plants instead of overhanging uh, planter? Well, I was thinking uh, it, it would just be a small trellis, just um, two by or oh, four by fours. Oh, so like, like a trellis. Yeah, like a trellis. Yeah, like you a trellis want that upstairs or something. No, no, no. It's oh, just no, okay. basically corbels with some some four by fours that come out of that plane no above the door. Okay, above yes. the door and window, so you get a nice uh, land, you know, a little greenery up there. Yeah, but uh, that so case, that will gates, be that will be the only window that we have uh, overhang on it. That's okay because it's a courtyard. I think. That courtyard could be quite nice, especially when you open those gates. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to see right into that. As far as the fence, you know, the detail up there shows a 46i wall that's solid, and then you have a solid portion of the of the actual movable part, and above the 46, it's open. Uh, so it's 72 inches high total. So I, I don't know. I, I agree. Thank you. No, it's just, what do you think? Well, I'll leave it up to up to you guys. I spoke. I said my uh, piece on it. Uh, whatever this board chooses to do, I'll go along with. Well, they're both reasonable. I think yours is reasonable because of that courtyard concept. Mr. Kiza is reasonable because you also, from an urban design standpoint, he makes a very good point. Uh, you, you think you want, want to avoid wall. You don't want to create walls onto the sidewalk. You yeah. Right. Things up. So maybe we could find a middle ground. Maybe instead of 72 inches, uh, maybe it's uh, 60 inches. What do you think of that? Sure to say a little bit lower. I mean, because that way you get... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's... Because five feet is about uh, eye level, and you'll sure. still be able to look in, and you still have a sense of privacy from the inside without... You're lower. saying 60 inches to the top. To the top, and then everything gets lower. Everything gets lowered down, so, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm always a little nervous of of considering what might be as opposed to what what it is here. I mean, to be honest, you know, the, the children and playing and all, you know, in these day and ages, you gotta you got to be watching your kid. You can't trust that it's because there's a wall, they're going to be it. Um, this really courtyard, even though the garages are off of it, seems to be the front yard for the second unit. And, and I'm kind of thinking as you come up to find it, if there's a gate closed and you don't even know where the address is, it, it seems making it a little more visually open and accessible seems to be logical yeah. to me. So you agree with five feet, or you think? Yeah, I, yeah, that would. Okay. Well, do we can we sell on that? Do you agree with what? that? Let's go five feet. Five feet to the top, and then everything gets dropped proportionally. So if that's five feet, we're dropping everything a foot. Then the solid part, that's 46, now will be, 30. say, 36. Mm -hmm. 36 is low. So yeah, we say 42 for the solid and 60 for the... Top, very top of the of the and open then, part, and then he'll have 18 inches of bar. Yeah, that would be nice. Have yeah. his uh, proportions okay. in there. So three foot six for the block wall, and then 16 inches for the yeah. for the iron work. Works for me. Okay. So that way you can see right through, and if there's some some kind of plant in there, there can also mm -hmm. uh, maybe they would not want to close it off too much, but. Um, the other note, and actually, as we, we talked about the, the the requirement for a licensed architect, a landscape designer. Um, it, it is deficient in landscape design, and not to tag on the expense of having to hire another professional. Maybe I probably should step out of this conversation. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I there, it, it, it needs some work on landscape. Do I require that to be a licensed architect? I guess I, you know I, I could see coming back with a landscape plan without maybe having it be tied to a licensed landscape architect. Actually, I think it's a requirement. Thank you. Zoning okay. Code. Then I think the licensed landscape architect is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> the applicant was aware. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's just... Well, they no, you tried. You did try. <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll make a motion to uh, approve... Actually, could, could I just yes, get sir. some clarification on yes, that part of it? Um, there was just some discussion in the in the staff report on the landscaping. Um, should the, the landscape architect that is employed look at those comments, concerns, suggestions, and work up a plan that addresses those? Is that sure. fine? In, in which I thought was your issue that there were no trees. Um, I mean that there were there were no trees. The um, 
Pampas grass can be invasive. Right. It's an invasive plant. It can be invasive. Um, possibly eliminating the masonry within the street side yard and the crushed rocks between the residences. Um, additionally, the, the house from the existing house from Elk, I'm sorry, from Adams is, is fairly symmetrical, yet the the walkway leading up to that house from the street is sort of at a diagonal. Yeah, um, which is existing, right? It's existing now, yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was a discussion that it, it may be more appropriate to relocate this walkway to the center of the, of the yard to sort of build on the cemetery. Um, do you all concur with those suggestions yeah, that the sure, landscape the architect landscape, can? Sure, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I would condition it that they would need to move the sidewalk, but I think having somebody come in and look at it and come back with a little more extensive, okay. detailed. Here's my take on it as well, if I could interject. This seems to be somewhat of a modest addition. I mean, they, they, they've taken um, an existing home. They're adding a modest addition to it. And with all the renovations and so forth, um, you know, the more you start manipulating the existing, the more of a cost you're incurring. And, and so I think that existing walkway could, with some landscaping on either side, um, could start to take shape and, and could start to address some of those needs that we need instead of, you know, conditioning that the applicant go ahead and redo that front yard. Oh, no, I wasn't, I don't think he was either. Were you, well, the applicant actually, had mentioned they were changing it already. He, he you, didn't say right. he was the doing existing, it over. Right. The existing diagonal walkway that's out there. Um, Is it proposed or existing? It's existing. There's an existing diagonal walkway that's out there. They were proposing to remove it and make make it um, not as wide. Oh, I see. So, so what's depicted in the site plan? Basically, it's proposed, not existing. Correct. Uh, and you're basically saying if we're going through the exercise of being a landscape architect, then well, he should, he or she should basically start analyzing, seeing if we could integrate a better functioning walkway to the front of the home. Right, more to build on the symmetry of the existing house. Well, since it's proposed, then uh, yeah, I would agree. Okay. No. Yeah. Proposed is the baby, not the walkway. Uh, we can't have cross communication because uh, it's being recorded. But if you would please come up and uh, okay, go on, Mr. Kiesel. Uh, that's all I have. Okay, <laughs> so okay. so I'll go back to my motion. Uh, move accept uh, the project uh, with the uh, conditions and comments. And the modification to. Comment number one from staff about right, the height. height of the wing walls and the automatic gate. And the trellis. And the trellis. Okay, would you like me to actually read? Yes, would you please? Stay? Sure. <laughs> um, Put my one at a time. Okay, we're eliminating condition number one in the staff report. We're keeping condition two, three, and four. Um, actually, no, we, were my, we, we agreed to... The wing walls are all reduced to a total of 60, wasn't it? Right, right. I modified it. Yeah, so I have that written down. I was just going to okay. eliminate and then... And then add it again. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, the first comment I had was consider changing the railings on the front porch to one more consistent with the craftsman style. That's on the existing house. Right. Okay. It's a consideration. Consideration. The yeah. second one was create small pockets of landscaping adjacent to the new dwelling within the entry court. Within these pockets, uh, install trellises. And I, I want to put in a caveat subject to compliance with the zoning code because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll need to make sure that, that by installing those uh, landscape areas, it's, it's not going to create a zoning violation with the turnarounds and the radiuses and so forth. Yeah. And, and it's really just a trellis over the front door attached above the entrance is what Mr. Aliano is trying to indicate. Okay, right. where would the... Because I envisioned like two like landscape areas right adjacent to the front door. They'd be cut in the... And they'd be cut opening, I mean, cut into the ground. They won't be planters. Right, right. Just, just adjacent to the front 
door? Yeah, I knew okay. the windows. And okay. Then, and then there could be some corbels with, with, with some corbels. Okay. Corbels and trellis. Okay. A couple of feet, two, three feet projection, something like that. Okay. And then the third comment had to do with the wing walls and the gate. Reduce the height of the wing walls and gate. The solid part of the wall shall be uh, 42 inches in height and the ironwork uh, 16 inches. 60, yeah. Six, 16 for a total. Actually, that's a total of 58 inches. Yeah, 60 inches total height. Oh, so 18 inches on 42 yeah. plus 18. Okay, so ironwork is 18 inches. I'm sorry. Okay. So those were uh, the conditions. Oh, what that? about the, the windows? Weren't we? Didn't we have a the sliding? But that's part of the common. I think. The, that was that was the fourth condition in the staff report. Are you fine with that? Or well, Mr. Yeah. Aliano recommended a square one. He was going to put a square one. Uh, yeah, actually, we're talking different windows because the staff report says the two windows facing the entry. Well, court. He, he was trying to. I think that's what they mean. Yeah. Yeah. But well, they're they're on the shadow. Oh, there's, there's one, one on in the shadow. I, I didn't see the second. So I he got was you. just going to do one of these on each side. Okay. With a, an operable. Yeah. Oh, right. It is in the shadow area there. Yeah. All right. Okay, so those were the conditions. Is that all right with you all? I'm going to second that. And are you fine with the record of decision language? Do you want to read it? If you want me to read it, I'll read it. If not, I'm if fine, we, we just, fine with it. I'm fine with it. You're fine? Okay. okay. They're getting longer and longer. I've noticed that. Well, it just depends. It just depends on the project. So. Or the, um, or the planner. Okay, this will be a roll call. The project, um, the motion was to approve the project with conditions. Uh, roll call, Mr. Ellis. Yes. Mr. Aliano. Yes. And Mr. Simonian. Yes. Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you. And I believe thank the you, next gentlemen. Uh, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from October the 2nd, 2008. Now, I was not present that day. I so was there. I I'll, I'll I move acceptance of the minutes. I don't think I was there either. Was that the yeah, only I think we need to then postpone. I'll the form, yeah. withdraw my yeah. move motion to accept the minutes. Until they, such they time look, we have a quorum for those uh, they look fine uh, minute to me. approvals. Yeah. And so the next item is the staff and board business discussion items, if any. I don't have any. Me you have none. None? I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Adjourn. Thank you, guys. All right.